Thank you very much, uh, Professor Valeri Thomas. This is my pleasure or my pleasure. Yes, okay, by mm -hmm. like yes. It's a uh, pleasure that uh, even privilege uh, to be here at uh, Georgia Tech because it was my dream actually when we discussed with Professor Valeri to be here to see how things are being done. And the, of course, I compare with uh, my background, the way I have been or where I'm working, and you see how to improve at our level, actually. You never know. The longest, that far away, the way is that far away, but uh, still, you can do something that uh, the level that we are now and achieve something. It's also a privilege that I've uh, given this chance of the seminar to try to take you through my audience, uh, the African Center of Excellence in Energy for Sustainable Development, because uh, it's a center which is there to answer some challenges of the world today. Uh, because sustainability is the key. Whatever, whoever that will receive at the center, sustainability is the key. So we are basically working on energy, available local resources, and trying to 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 to, let, to, to help our people get access to energy resources, electricity, or cooking, fuel, etc. So the African Center of Excellence that I'm going to talk about is in Rwanda. Uh, yeah, today it's not easy to, uh, it's simple to explain about the country because anyone can Google and find it. Rwanda is a, I take just small time, short time to explain about it. Rwanda is a small, small country, land in addition, near DRC, near Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, it's landlocked. And it takes long distance to reach the sea, the ocean. It's there, and it is the fourth country in the density population in the world. I compare Singapore and the others, it's the fourth one. So you can imagine, you can understand, this climate is too small again. Uh, we have some resources, of course, minerals and uh, energy resources. Uh, uh, we're talking about methane gas currently being exploited by American companies. We are talking hydro is basically the main source of energy currently. Uh, we, we have shifted from oil thermal power plants to, to renewable. Uh, methane gas is still there, but now Doing well. We have 13, 22 million population. Let me talk about the University of Rwanda in that small country. That's why I started in 1963. It was established by Canadian uh, Christian people who came to Rwanda and they tried small thing like a college, small college, and then and then after it became a university. Before, nine, before 1994, tra uh, tragedy, genocide, only graduates from the university were 2.9, almost 3,000. But after the genocide, now we are reaching to 50 graduates. So you can see there is a big achievement. Why this, in the way along, some other institutions were created. We have uh, some institutions created in the agriculture, in the health. Yeah, we are talking about um, we are talking about this polytechnic. This is was the government. Then it was shifted to to to, 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 to one university. Actually, they made different institutions created by the government. You know, we would have like. Uh, going to back to the, the, the like going back to 
So due to the country here, we have the other side of the side you, you have the government would create as an, an, an institution, academic institution, to respond to the questions people have in, in different regions. Then after, the government realized that this can't work. It's better having the one institution as like an umbrella covering those ones and they become colleges. So that is the University of Rwanda that we have here. This is before. But uh, these became colleges. You can see Kigali, this is the capital, with the one having four colleges or campus, campuses, and also all over the country. They became colleges, the same universe or campus. Like you can find that like my campus, my college, which is the College of Science and Technology, we are having in Nagatari, which was Polytechnic, we are having some department or schools there in, the, in different uh, campus. So that's how it, it is. Before it was only this one, the unit, we used to we would call it National University of Rwanda. And it was the main one before 1994, only one university. So then after, government created more and more, and then after na, 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 uh, 2013, there, there was a match. They were matched to one university that I'm talking about. Okay. Can I ask something from the first slide? There is a significant difference between uh, men and women. Is that because of the genocide or armed conflict, or is if it? You talk about on your very first slide. You have the number of women and men. Yes. Is that the population? Yes. There's a, a you know a lot more women. A lot more women than men. Now we have men, women. It's a percentage. The percentage is high. Is high because of genocide. Genocide. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Of the, of During the, the genocide. When you know, you no know, killings or blah blah blah, blah made some well, mostly they are targeting men, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's maybe what happened, but they can't express explain why. Maybe the, the statistics board can maybe explain why. Mm -hmm. This is very recent, 2022. Mm -hmm. Then you, yes, you will see even because of this number. The government has taken a policy. It's a mandatory, it's a law for any institution. Representativity is 30%. Is what percent? Women. Um, how many? 30. 30 percent. 30 percent. That is the law. If you are not meeting, it's a problem. Sometimes you have to go and explain to the parliament why this happened. You make sure that you find it 30 percent, whatever you do, even in private sector. You make sure that you are part of us. And the number we increase. Currently, the, the in parliament, the government, the parliament, the majority is women. Female. But that's how it is. It's even about 60% something. Mm -hmm. One yeah. Yes. Yeah, talking about the, the University of Rwanda, of course, this is the performance about graduates and the students. Yeah. In different colleges, that is uh, the achievement actually. And then the government is uh, financing the, the university at this percentage. Government return to budget. And you have also the government budget, which is uh, 24 or, or, or 25. And the partnership is still low. Actually, this is going to be my point actually to explain. It's very low here. And the uh, this is not in line of the government. Government wants to increase this in order to support other projects of the government. We, we wanted to have a, a sustained institution, but it's still a challenge. Do all the colleges have graduate students? Or is, are graduate students concentrated in one or two colleges? All of them, all of them. Because they are actually, as it is built, College, it's like independent, half independent. But today, have got the vice chancellor of 
who is like a CEO and they have, there is a board of Universal Rwanda, but college has got a principal and finance and the human resource, everything is there. So college is graduating as a, and then the, the number is reported to the university board or administration. That's how it is. Okay. These are actually the distribution of students per college, distribution, population. You see uh, this, this is the College of Education. It's very high. This is the College of Science and Technology. Yeah, belonging. yeah it's the second. This is the College of Medicine. You have sciences. And you have agriculture, veterinary medicine, and you have also uh, art and social sciences. Okay, and then the university has got also the, 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 the centers. We have African Center of Excellence. Uh, they are regional, as I will explain about the African Center of Excellence, and it was sustainable development. All of this that you see here. Uh, they are there because of the government will. Government contracted the loans either from World Bank, from ADB, African Development Bank, and the other financial institutions to create this one. Because the government strategy is to make Rwanda a hub, hub for Africa. So currently you can visit Rwanda, it's like Many African people, they are enjoying, I mean, they are studying there, there are many, you know, you go into the street and you find many, they didn't want to come to Rwanda to study because of this. You see, we have a center in data science, so masters and PhD as well. We have this energy for sustainable development, we have internet of things, they are also doing well, and they have innovative teaching and learning, and there is also this ISTP. This is uh, basically from, uh, it's uh, based on physics sciences. Uh, it's representing the whole Africa and the headquarters of the Rwanda. We have central research in the university and the natural resources management, and we have also this one about medical engineering. This is being funded by the ADB, African Development Bank. And uh, this one also, is mostly funded by the German institution. This is a vaccine immunization and supply chain management. It came during COVID-19 when things were hard, you know, and no one could know what to do, you know, and then the argument was made for this. Uh -huh. And it is, this is very recent. You can send to a for sustainable economy and it's called China. Very recent one. It's new. Who, who supports that last one? Uh, the this whole chain? Yeah. Uh, this one, we have UN, United Nations is there, World Bank as well. Also, it's like a basket. They put them together. Yeah. Let's have this. Uh, okay. Uh, I actually, like the fact that you name all the institutions, African Center of Excellence, it's actually true because I have a lot of people who go from Ghana to Rwanda, especially with the kind of Gimelon. Yeah, kind of Gimelon. Yeah, they have like a campus now in Rwanda. And so a lot of like Ghanaians from my university will go there to go and continue. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, these are also the other institutions, like uh, maybe in the near future, we have Georgia Tech also having yeah. a, a college over there, a campus. No. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Uh, these are the MOUs that we have with different institutions. Uh, mostly they are academic ones. They are MOUs that we've, so far we signed with them, 135. We try to show using the continent, the map, where we have many, maybe you see. Africa have many, uh, Canada we do, <laughs> and Europe as well, and yeah. 
I'll spare you until you want. Okay, let us then go to the African Center of Excellence for Sustainable Development. This center is a center for research and training for masters and PhD, not only in training short courses. It's this was created here from the government or partnership with the World Bank and the government of Rwanda, and it was a run of ideas in order to train those masters, PhD, and short trainings. The objective was to increase the number, to reduce the number of Africans who always want to go to Europe or America, and most of the time they stay, they don't want to come back. We say, why, don't, why not having in housing in Africa some programs which can attract Africans and even international professors to come and teach, and then we, we train in house. That, that's what also we emphasize on when we talk about how the program is built, because there is a partnership and collaboration between international professors and local professors for one student they are supervising. So there is that partnership. So this is uh, then the main mission and the vision. Of course, that's what I said, the local resources that we have, and then using technology, new technologies, we try to find solutions to rural population, to remote areas. We are talking about off-grid solutions here. That's really basically what we're talking about. Uh, now for future projects, we are shifting or mixing with other projects. So I said it's a regional, you see Rwanda, is here, but uh, it's east and south. We have a student. The project that is built, it's a must to have 25% of region coming from outside Rwanda and others may be coming from Rwanda. This is a minimum we may have many coming from outside. So it means we have to go and search for them. We encourage them. We, you know, we let them get interest of the center or the project or the programs that we have in the car. So, in addition to that, it's a must to have twenty percent of female, female, either local twenty percent and don't have local twenty percent. It's not or no. Just twenty percent from outside Rwanda, regional, and you know, twenty percent in the country. So that's how it is. Uh huh. The objective actually of the center was to increase. Yes, that's what I explained. But also the main one was that collaboration, partnership, exchange, students exchange, and the professors exchange. We have to report about it because the project is on a performance base in order to disperse money. The World Bank to disperse money, you need to, first of all, you report the performance and then cross check whether you are achieved or not. If you are achieved, then you get more money. That's how it is. And then <laughs> the center started with an ambitious, really, an ambitious target. Uh, I, can't, I put it to myself when we started the center, imagine having 40 PhDs, 40 PhD after five years. It, it was unbelievable. And 220 master's students. It was a must because in order to get to the five, I was told for 5.5 million, that is what you should meet. Then it was a challenge. It was a challenging. It was very hard to achieve or to to be there. We started with thirty six. If I go further, PhD students, we said that as you know, we don't know. You can't, you know, and you rule every year in the theory and you achieve your you achievement. It's better we bring you know all of them together now, and we try to find professors. You know, I usually discuss this with Professor Blair. When the center started, 
it was like no thing. New project in Rwanda, not only Rwanda, even in Africa. We are talking about energy for sustainable development, no program at all in Africa, in that area. In Rwanda, no professors, no single one. I, I was the one coming from energy economics. One, first, the first one coming from energy, others, they started something different and they called it like electrical, but it wasn't really. They called it like energy, it wasn't really. They were in mechanical, they were in, electron, in electronics, like that, but it wasn't. Really. And then imagine starting the program with 40 PhDs, masters, no lecturers, no professors at all. <laughs> That's a work for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the loan, the, 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 already it is signed and you have to implement. <laughs> and then the meetings are regular. Every every three months, we meet at the World Bank, you know, to report to the achievement. It was really challenging. That's why even that is how even we met Professor Jonathan. Professor Marie Thomas and the others. We explain like I'm explaining to them. That's the problem. And they were like, eh? <laughs> this can't work. That's what they say. Oh, it can't, it can't work. Why do you, you accept things like this one? It can't work at all. But later on, they said, okay, let us see what we can do together. Then together we did something. We are handling in all things and it is progressing. Uh, like, now already 10, after five, six years, only 10 graduated successfully. And others, like 10 or 22, they're also coming. Maybe after seven years, but it's okay. That's, how, that's what we can achieve, at least they will have. And uh, the good thing is, like, this one also increased the number of PhDs from the University of Rwanda, or even from Rwanda, trained in-house, inside. Yeah. Okay, then, yes, uh, this, this, this is what I've explained earlier, and the uh, females for PhD in that area. But these are the loans. Now we have 36% of female, um, yes, of female PhD, and uh, 32 female master, and it will be achieved. In the program now. PhD, here graduates, I didn't put the, the percentage, but uh, if I recall, we we'll have only one, only one female graduate from Nigeria. Yeah. It was under Jonathan. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenny, yeah. yeah, these are the programs that we have. We have the program in the New York Energy, Electrical Power Systems, Energy Economics, Masters. And our PhD, they are PhD by research in the renewable energy, energy economics, and the people power systems. Uh, this, uh, this is the structure, you know. Uh, I brought, uh, brought this one just to show you because it is like a government project. They made sure that it is very well managed, controlled. That's why we have what we call National Steering Committee. This is like, a, it's almost a cabinet of ministers. Minister of Infrastructure, because he's working on energy. This Minister of Health. This Minister of Education. This Minister of Local Government, because they want these resources to go up to the rural places. It's like, this is the National Steering Committee. And they meet uh, every six weeks. Six months, two times a year. And then we have the principal of the college, means the principal of the College of Science Technology, where the center is. This one is, is, is not even the secretary of this. The secretary of this is the vice chancellor of the university, is the one to report on this cabinet, I said. <laughs> and then there is the advisory board. The advisory board is like uh, any one of you. We do what we call head hunting, and we are appointed, we interest you, and you accept, and then you are part of the, the board here, and you help us to, to govern. And, to, you know. and then there is the center director, and the FT center director, and the other supporting staff, as you can see. I brought this here 
to show you some projects that we have. These are the projects that, that students are working on. Some, these are the current, those ones, 10, blah, blah, they, you know, they are not included. Because the, your students is not here. The project is not here. Maybe it's not very, very clear, but I put also flags to show you where the study, the study is based. Let's call it its base. Like, it's not the student, but uh, in the sense is Kenya, like this one, Kenya, even his, what he's doing really is for Kenya, there where he be, is based. He's not based in Kenya, but they come to the center and they live there. And the life and we give them stipend, everything in the state. But the project seriously, we, we work on the thing that you understand. That is uh, Kenya. Do you have uh, this is Malawi? No, this is Zimbabwe, Burundi, Tanzania, this is Nigeria, this is South Sudan, yeah, this is in the Uganda. Oh, sorry. Please. Uh -huh. If I talk, I speak again about the center. This is what I said to you last time. This is the center of It's teaching one to do experiment with them. We are just trying to teach using this equipment. Now it's bought after from German company. They are the one assisting us to maintenance and whatever. You have a free phase, you have a wind, you have photovoltaic, and you have also hydro. Maybe after we discuss more about it, as, we, as I said, but that is what we have. But this is in, in addition, because we have also another one. We have others which can do experiment, or they can graduate to have some equipment, laboratories, which also can be used by the masters and PhD. So then, this is the partnership and the collaboration, some of them that we have. Uh, we have Colorado State University, we have Imperial College of London. We both say this is a new established company from, uh, from UK, England, which is, working, which is working in a PV system. It is supplying energy to people, to, to, to people. And these are other universities. This is the number of the private sector in the energy. It's an EPD. And the term of this is either, this is either have been assisting Rwanda in the training PhDs. The, the collaboration partnership is now 20 years old. Yeah. And there is also Italian one. Okay. Then uh, I, I talked about challenges. These are the challenges that we have. The challenges that you have so far, we have lecturers, professors, it is there, there, there are gaps. 20%, 42%, 66%, 67 This is the gap that you have in professors and lecturers. Now we can also the collaboration with industry. Locally, we can make, we can money because we don't have big industries in the, in the country, in the, in the energy. We have like, the most one is the utility, national utility, on the energy group. They are doing well, we are training students, you know, their staff, like, and we are partnering even for some short trainings, it's good. But when it comes to, to, international ones because it's regional as it is regional yeah, of course we are trying to find solution to regional or local problems but to find solution we need also to have some big companies already made advanced 
or who pass which pass through those problems, then we can find solution together. But they can help us maybe in the internship. Or maybe they can help us through grant, you know, sponsoring some students. These are the basic basically the gaps that okay, currently we we have. Then for those gaps, and then the question is to know each project has a name. After the project, one bank is out. What will happen then? We thought about it. We try to think about what to be done, and we define seven pillars which will guide us for sustainability. Of course, you find this them as teaching and learning as usual, research and innovation, income generation, collaboration and partnership, and the governance program. Therefore, we thought about we thought about incubation and the innovation hub. That is the important one that we think this can maybe somehow bridge the gap between academia and the industry. So grid innovation and incubation hub is a research. If this one is attracting that for many people. When you say you have grid, grid and innovation hub, grid innovation and incubation hub, they say what? What? And they want to know what is this? We have been receiving many coming, even from where, far, other continent, coming to see this one only. Yeah, of course, it's new. It started recent, like 2021. It's new, very new. But uh, still, we, we have some projects. This was just for innovation, for incubation, you know, and the first, the, the, the first Instruction to come to assist us was the channels that I mentioned earlier. They come and they injected money for supporting innovation. Uh, these are some achievements. There are some achievements. We have some 10 startups, incubators, five. Business trained, they are 15, and uh, the applications received, they are 13, 113. It's, we, 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 there is a call every year to bring your new, whatever, new projects or new ideas. Then we, the committee is set to try to choose to the best which can cause an impact to the society. So these are the, the achievements so far. And uh, yeah, this one, it's the process, mentorship, uh, some sessions. Then these are some projects from the Dutch Center, that's great innovation and incubation hub. Um, uh, these two, like this one, this one, we can call him the best, he was the best, this one, from others. And he worked with, with a professor from Germany, and this professor is supporting him, even. he was our master student. Is supporting him for further more research in his project. So you can see the project. Uh -huh. uh, I thank you then. It so was short, but uh, uh, your questions are welcome. Then maybe we can discuss more because I've been there with others, among others, starting the center. So I know many not all, but many, about the center. Uh, 
quotes, uh, actually, I will, the conclusion, what I can say is uh, to work together to attract uh, more partnerships yeah. from industry. We think about more uh, big companies in this world, either Americans, uh, Europe, or whatever, which can also come and support the uh, education. Another thing is uh, support in education, academia, like you professors, you lecturers, uh, let us work together to to have this center sustainable rather than stopping soon. Uh, there is an experience that we have already so far. How we have been working with Professor Barian Jonathan. Uh, the University of Rwanda has built a system whereby if you are supervising a student, you come as an international, one or two, no problem. It means, it means outside, international, regional, no problem. And you have also local uh, professors like myself. Then this is also capacity building for the supervising team. This is capacity building. And then you the same time you are training the student. So this, we found this really important and good practice in order to help to assist the African as a continent, the Africa as a continent. The center is not for one, just as you come and do the middle for You come to the center, you help Uganda, you assist Tanzania, the RC, and the other, so that you try to increase the number of professors, lecturers, that area. Other things uh, we can handle together, uh, grant, proposal writing, partnership in the industry and the collaboration. The more use we universities to have and we keep increasing the number of them. And they are also helping one way or another because uh, we, we were having students going for industrial attachment or academic experience. They have not only from Rwanda, I mean from Rwanda going, even from maybe Georgia Tech coming to Rwanda and they learn you know, Last last year, last year maybe yes, uh, we received some students from here, undergraduate students. Mm, yes, it was really good and we appreciated a lot. And then our students also learned a lot from them. So that that's that is that's my presentation. If there are some questions, you are most welcome. We can still discuss about them. Thank you. Perhaps we can start with our online audience. Are there any questions or comments from those of you who are online? Just jump in if, if so. I guess we can turn to the room. Uh, could you speak to how the structure of the multilateral banks, like the, uh, I'm, I'm familiar with what happened in uh, US and Europe with regard to research and how the impact of, let's say, Georgia Tech, for example, they have a super high credit rating and how they work in tandem with the local government ensure that they get a certain price so that, and this reflects in the research is students that can be attracted and so on and so forth. Could you explain like how the multilateral banks and how German or Western banks are assisting you in that local capacity? Because from what I can tell, the rate of inflation is like 13%. We're on export import bank on, on one. So I mean I'm, I have to infer that 
we have to import so many things that have, and we don't have to import at such a high cost. Are they assisting you guys in that stuff so that it can be not just technical, uh, intangibly, but in a practical basis, for you to actually execute locally and independently and sustainably as well. It seems like they're changing now their policy. Yeah, the first uh, first uh, changing now. Uh, according to what we 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 have we have, we have achieved really a good performance in terms of publications. Uh, the visibility of the university has increased. Uh, and the uh, our young uh, people, they are, they are not fear no more. They are not fear. They are not fearing anymore about you no know, research blah blah blah. Of course, we are trying to increase the data research area. Uh, what I can say that is actually this falls in the in the DCG IIH that we we created. It was also created a partnership with the World Bank, which also supported the, the project. We wanted to find a solution to that question. Why not? This can the research output can be converted into tangible thing, which can in, at the end reduce the dependence of the imports. But that, that was the one. That's why uh, when we received projects, it wasn't really only in the energy sector. It was also in the agriculture. We have also a project of the DB. And the other projects in the, in the construction, you know. But uh, of course, we are just starting. They are still, uh, we are still at that level, which is like cannot call it low, but uh, maybe something is being done. We will hope so. We hope to have something strong in, in the near future. But that is one of the strategies that we are looking for. Yes. Thank you. About the last innovation center that you started. Um, so last year we started some, well, I don't know if you're familiar with the Create X program at Georgia Tech. It's uh, to help students become entrepreneurs. Um, and we started a collaboration with them called Sustainable X, which is, you know, helping students who are interested in climate tech, environment, and social impact entrepreneurship. And I wonder if um, there could be a connectivity there. For example, every two weeks, um, they have a hangout where they advise each other and they hear from professors. I'm not sure about the time difference. What is the time? Seven hours in our head. Seven hours, okay. So they might have to move the hangout to uh, a different time. But um, I think it would be very um, to be very good. valuable cross-learning, right? Um, if we got students together where they share in these platforms. Is the time um, cohort? Mainly graduate or undergraduate or undergraduate, yeah. Graduate. Although there are some graduates too, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this year we're going to add something where we take the students who have ideas, like that student you said, mm -hmm. they have a prototype, like they're successful. Yes. Um, we're going to hire, and it might already have happened, a person who has worked on a social enterprise scaling up. And we're going to have a program, which I think is going to be online. Yeah. And she's in Europe. So, yeah, I don't know about the time zones, but <laughs> it might be it might be an opportunity. Yeah, there might be an opportunity to um, incorporate yeah. some of the projects that are far along to think, how do we scale from here? How do we get our first customer, et cetera? So, you know, I could see, um, I think if um, we were to connect uh, Andre and Kartik, um, 
Yeah. One of them actually has done research with um, cloud factories in Kenya and Uber-like ambulance platforms in another African country, maybe Nigeria. So you know they also have so one of those faculty members. Yeah. So I think that'll be a nice thing to do before you you leave. Yeah. Yeah. At least as one as one connectivity. Sure. Yeah. Sure. This will help us a lot. Uh, Ten business that we can sell to money because. Sometimes, sometimes we have a meeting in the morning here, uh, maybe uh, yeah, till 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 twelve here. Yeah. And one, of course, twelve uh, six seven, pm there. Seven pm. Yeah. Seven pm. Yeah. Maybe eleven. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But our European partner will probably want to do it during the workday for herself, so that works well. Yeah. For yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Appreciation. We appreciate. Yeah. 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 So, yes. so you mentioned you have the first cohorts of students are graduating or, or graduate PhD and master's. Students. What are they going on to do? What's their next steps? Uh, so that is a really important question to ask. Uh, and a difficult to answer. <laughs> most of uh, let me say then do not use most of them because. Oh, and let me just give a report, maybe, what happened. Like, Satoon is doing well in Namibia. Mm -hmm. Namibia is doing well. Uh, so he's working for international company in the electrical power system in Namibia. He's, yeah, he yeah, himself can test. When you say I'm getting a good salary, it happened before, before even his graduation salary. Yeah. Others, like Nigeria, most of them, they're, they're coming from the academia. They, they went back to school, to the university, to teach and to teach. They are not, they are not shooting to the industry, but uh, here, uh, they, they, they knew come up, new graduates. They, they are not coming from the, the institutions like academic, academic institutions. They will need to go somewhere like industry. That's what you need to work on. Maybe the strategy we put in place is to have the industrial attachment. The minimum is two months, but we are planning to increase the time on industrial attachment. The industrial attachment is not for just teaching and get, it's just to discover also the new life, the industry level. That's what we are doing. Then that was the challenge that we have when you are, I'm talking about the partnership with the industry. That is the, that's the partnership that I'm targeting. If we are sending the students and then maybe they are trying to know what you are doing, sometimes you get interest and you get, oh, why not, why not coming back and you work with me here? That is what we are trying to see as a gap as well. But most of them that they are for academia, they went out. The Kenyan one, the the, the Uganda one, Nigeria as well, the, the, the lady in the Jonathan supervision, she's teaching today with and they, yeah, they are all in academia. But the challenge is that one. Those ones who are graduating, I thought we have graduation ceremony 17 this month. Are they still looking for jobs? Yeah, Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, they are looking for jobs. Some of them they vote, but uh, the jobs that they don't like, yeah, they want to survive. But they think after the graduation, maybe after getting the degree or whatever, they'll get more. But still, because they have that gap, the gap until even the gap that we have, we don't have good industry in the energy area. Yeah. It's also challenging. Yeah, as Incubation, blah, blah. That's why we should also increase you know, our effort to bring in no to point of production. Maybe from what they have discovered during the study, they can turn into the business. Why not? Have a business for even other. It's a big challenge you have. Are you able to hire back some of them? You said you had a gap in instructors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are your PhD, or I guess some of them are masters, are they candidates to be that teaching 
in your yes. own institution? Yes. Uh, some of them, for example, uh, like energy economics, we don't have at all. At all. We have a three. It will be you know, recruited in the system of the universe. And they, if they have that two they like, then they come to teach. Sometimes they don't want to put the salary there for academia. In academia, is not interesting to me. I need to have that enjoyable life. <laughs> so I used to be advanced professor about the, you know, focusing on the advancement of women in academia. So of course I was interested to see that you have 30% in the program, but only 10% uh, graduated from the PhD. One yeah, one out of ten yes, out of PhD ten. was women. Mm -hmm. um, the factors may be the same as here, but I'm curious what did you feel the factors were for the women to drop out disproportionately? It's, maybe uh, uh, it's a general problem. Uh, when you say STEM programs, it's general problem over there. I don't say in Africa, but in Rwanda, where I know. Uh, they start men, even at the role of undergraduate or high school, mostly. And then as they grow, they grow up, the number is decreasing in the sciences. They prefer rather to go to social sciences, there are many, economics, and it is but if it comes to science, mathematics, they don't like. That's the problem. So the strategy you will have taken, now we are going back to high school. And, and we call it as we, we, we yeah, with male outreach activity. We go and teach them, we interest them, the duty of coming to sciences. That's what we do. But that's the problem that imagine. This problem was uh, addressed to the old bank. We say, they, they ask the same question as you're asking. <laughs> every year, I mean, military reporting, every year report, that the question as the conclusion, eh? in the conclusion, like asking why that percentage is always blah, blah, blah. We want to have, you know, why, what is the, and you explain they are not convinced. <laughs> No, they are never convinced. No, you should go and you find them and you bring them. Yeah, but and you should put in place the, we did, the, the motivation, the encouragement, we did. They are getting even higher stipend compared to others. We compare, we consider even the, 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 the problems, maybe at home, blah, 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 blah. And we support the woman bringing even the kids. We did like uh, the, the one from South Sudan. She's there. Even the the son, the daughter, they're also studying undergraduate. We are supporting somehow, not hundred percent. But uh, like how they go to like scholarship, blah blah blah. It is really supportive. That's fantastic. Actually. Yeah, we don't have that here. <laughs> yeah, you are. I was explaining to Professor Valeri. Maybe the, there is a student. Maybe we're trying to find a supervisor here. Or somewhere else, I don't know, but we are trying. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This, uh, she was in my classroom. She came with a baby, <laughs> two, two months old, oh. and the teaching, and she was sitting there, and the, you know, and I said, don't worry, just sit more, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yes, not only once, like a month, three months, she was there getting the stipend and they really we supported. That's why we need to have like a, that is what you call the, the whatever, I don't know how they call it. A special, a special room for that one. And, uh, it is being encouraged at home and uh, in many schools now. So as one way also of motivating female to come. Yeah, that one is more like the PhD daughter and son at the undergraduate, She's there, and that student also, she was good. 
Now she have a second form. Yes. We try to, to motivate them to give some incentive, but they don't like sometimes. Like we wanted, like we put a call outside and we say, we need only female. Discrimination like that. We know only females, we get scholarship. Others, no, we not get. <laughs> we didn't get. They didn't come. Well, I mean, many of the people who do PhDs here, they tend to postpone having kids, and so there's this big trade-off. I'm actually quite impressed that um, that it's inclusive that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very nice. But uh, very nice. this was all the main objective even for this project, to welcome many people. Actually, our winners last year were undergraduates. I mean, the top three teams, um, two of them were women, and they were interested in social impact things. So one of them, they wanted to create an app um, that rates uh, businesses according to disabilities. And the other ones, they developed a platform to um, help businesses hire uh, neurodiverse uh, like people with autism, etc. So yeah, that's definitely a win. But anyway, I think we've gone over time. This is fascinating. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Thank you for the audience. For... You're welcome. Uh, thank you to Stuart Minson, who is the a leader in the um, Atlanta Global Studies Center for co-sponsoring this talk and generally being supportive of all of our activities. Thank you. Thank you.